James Remar, a name synonymous with intensity and captivating screen presence, began his life far from the bright lights of Hollywood. Born William James Remar on December 31, 1953 in Boston, Massachusetts, his early years were spent in the suburban town of Newton. It wasn't until the age of 20, inspired by a transformative summer camp experience, that Remar discovered his true calling, acting. This realization marked the beginning of a lifelong dedication to his craft, a journey that would see him embody a diverse range of characters and leave an indelible mark on the world of film and television. Armed with a newfound passion for acting, James Remar dove headfirst into the world of theater. His journey began on the vibrant stages of Florida, where he honed his skills and developed his stage presence. Eager to further his training, he set his sights on the prestigious Neighborhood Playhouse School of the Theater in New York City, a breeding ground for some of the industry's finest talents. Life in New York City was a far cry from his suburban upbringing, but Remar embraced the city's energy immersing himself in the world of acting. He faced his share of challenges and setbacks early on, a testament to the competitive nature of the industry. Undeterred, he persevered, accepting roles in touring productions and gracing the stage at the esteemed Ensemble Studio Theater. It was during this formative period that Remar's raw talent and dedication began to attract attention. He poured his heart and soul into every performance captivating audiences with his intensity and commitment to his craft. His hard work and unwavering determination would soon pay off, as he caught the eye of casting directors and filmmakers, leading to his breakthrough role in the 1978 prison drama On the Yard, marking his official entry into the world of film. With his film debut, James Remar embarked on a new chapter in his career, one that would see him transition from the stage to the silver screen. His early experiences in theater had laid a solid foundation, instilling in him the discipline, work ethic, and raw talent that would propel him to success in the world of Hollywood. James Remar's breakthrough role came in 1979 with Walter Hill's cult classic, The Warriors. Cast as the menacing hothead Ajax, Remar commanded the screen with his imposing physicality and chilling intensity. Both brutal and charismatic, Ajax cemented his place as a rising star in Hollywood and showcased his ability to inhabit characters with a dark side. While Remar excelled at portraying tough guys and antagonists, he was determined to avoid being typecast. He actively sought out roles that challenged him and showcased his versatility as an actor. In 1980, he took on the role of Windhand in the historical drama Windwalker, a film spoken entirely in the Cheyenne and Crow languages. Remar, dedicated to authenticity, learned his lines phonetically, delivering a powerful and moving performance as the young Cheyenne warrior. That same year, Remar further demonstrated his willingness to embrace challenging roles in William Friedkin's controversial neo-noir thriller Cruising. His portrayal of a gay man in the film was a bold choice at the time, showcasing his commitment to exploring diverse characters and pushing boundaries. Throughout the 1980s and 1990s, Remar continued to build an impressive filmography, moving seamlessly between leading and supporting roles. He portrayed half-breed Sam Starr in another Walter Hill helmed feature, The Long Riders, which uniquely cast real-life brothers as screen iterations of the James and Younger gangs. But his breakout role was as the volatile and unpredictable Albert Gans in Walter Hill's 1982 action comedy, 48 Hours. Starring opposite Eddie Murphy and Nick Nolte, Remar stole every scene he was in as the ruthless criminal, his piercing gaze and unpredictable nature holding audiences captive. Gans not only showcased Remar's range, but also his ability to hold his own against Hollywood heavyweights. His performance was met with critical acclaim, further solidifying his reputation as an actor who could bring depth and complexity to even the most villainous of characters. These early successes in The Warriors and 48 Hours proved to be pivotal for Remar's career. He had firmly established himself as a force to be reckoned with in Hollywood, an actor capable of commanding the screen and captivating audiences with his raw talent and undeniable presence. Remar's ability to disappear into his characters, whether playing a hardened criminal, a historical figure, or a vulnerable soul, solidified his reputation as a chameleon of an actor, one who consistently brought depth and authenticity to every role he inhabited. A career highlight, the culmination of years of toil, was in noted auteur, Francis Ford Coppola's The Cotton Club. As real-life mobster Dutch Schultz, Remar was the main antagonist to Richard Gere's trumpet-playing hero. 
Locked in a love triangle with the beautiful Diane Lane, their performances were electric, even if the film's grosses were not. Despite being attached to a big-budget flop, Remar's manic, psychotic performance propelled him further forward. Throughout the 80s, he jumped from the big screen to the small and back again. Featured roles in hit shows like Miami Vice, The Equalizer, Crime Story, and The Hitchhiker, were interspersed with parts in films as diverse as The Clan of the Cave Bear, Band of the Hand, and Quiet Cool. In 1986, Remar experienced a career low when he was caught with drugs while in England filming James Cameron's Aliens. Due to his legal problems, he was unable to complete his role as the heroic Corporal Hicks and was replaced by Michael Bean. The one positive to come of this was it forced Remar to deal with his addiction, which he eventually overcame. Re-engaging his career, his role as Preston, in the heartbreaking segment Lover's Vow of the horror anthology Tales from the Dark Side, the movie stands out in what has become a cult classic. Parts in White Fang, Blink, and yet another Walter Hill film, Wild Bill, kept him working and in the public eye. He essayed the role of Raiden, originally portrayed by Christopher Lambert, in Mortal Kombat, Annihilation, and starred in the short-lived but much-loved Stephen Bochco-David Milch collaboration, Total Security, with Jim Belushi. In 2000, Remar was a part of Robert Zemeckis's thriller, What Lies Beneath, co-starring Hollywood heavyweights Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer. From 2001 to 2004, Remar was Richard Wright on HBO's smash hit television series, Sex in the City. He also appeared in the popular comedy, The Girl Next Door, and Blade Trinity. In 2012, Quentin Tarantino came calling, casting Remar in his revisionist western, Django Unchained, as villain Butch Pooch. A successful seven-season run as the title character's father in Dexter followed. The lauded Showtime series about a serial-killing Miami forensics officer proved popular with audiences and critics alike. In 2016, he co-starred with a young Austin Butler in the popular The Shannara Chronicles. The following year, he appeared as Frank Gordon, Commissioner James Gordon's father, in a three-episode arc on Gotham. He reunited with Tarantino and Butler with a bit part in the hit film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. An appearance on the stellar Taylor Sheridan Western show Yellowstone soon followed. In keeping with his elite portfolio, Remar recently worked with Christopher Nolan on the Academy Award-winning Oppenheimer and re-teamed with Francis Ford Coppola on his artistic work of love Megalopolis. It's clear that James Remar's contributions to the entertainment industry are nothing short of remarkable. Over the years, he has built a legacy that continues to inspire both fans and fellow actors alike. His dedication to his craft and his ability to bring complex characters to life have cemented his status as a true icon in Hollywood. Beyond the glitz and glamour, James Remar is a man of many layers. Off screen, he is known for his humility and grounded nature. Despite his busy career, he has always prioritized his family. He has been married to Atsuko Remar since 1984, with whom he has two children. Often speaking about the importance of maintaining a balance between work and personal life, his story is a testament to the fact that success in the industry doesn't have to come at the expense of one's personal happiness. Throughout his illustrious career, James Remar has received numerous accolades that highlight his talent and versatility. From prestigious award nominations to wins that celebrate his outstanding performances, his achievements serve as a testament to his skill and dedication. These honors not only recognize his past work, but also solidify his place in the annals of cinematic history. Even after decades in the industry, James Remar shows no signs of slowing down. His continued presence in Hollywood underscores his enduring appeal and adaptability. Whether taking on new roles or revisiting beloved characters, he remains a dynamic force in the world of entertainment. As we look to the future, it's exciting to imagine what new heights he will reach and the impact he will continue to have on audiences around the globe. And with that, we conclude this entry into the Pantheon. Thank you for watching.